you know, if someone else, if some of the other bigger, na- more established names had have done that, it'd be still talked about. I actually enjoyed writing from, but I, he, you know, it was everyone's fault by his. You know, if you, if you put those in the other yards, I'm not fully convinced that they would do as well. I think the style of training suited some horses. Hello and welcome along to Inside Track, the debate brought to you by William Hill. My name is Kate Tracy and on this week's episode, we're going to be ranking our top five modern day trainers. And I'm being joined to discuss and debate these five trainers alongside three William Hill ambassadors, Barry Garrity, Sir A.P. McCoy and Nick Luck. So lads, the five modern day trainers I want you to rank are Willie Mullins, Henry de Bromhead, Paul Nichols, Nikki Henderson and John Joe O'Neill. So no pressure on a few allegiances here and potential biases, lads, to the pair of you two, but you have your whiteboards at the ready, so please get compiling your list. Now, whilst the lads are finalising their list, a reminder as ever to subscribe and like William Hill Racing's YouTube channel and also hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode because we do have so much more content coming your way on Inside Track, the debate. Right, lads, top five list ready to reveal in three, two, one. Yeah, I thought I might be the outlier. Yeah, definitely the outlier is Nick. So you've got Paul Nichols as number one. AP has got Willie. Barry, who's your number one there? Willie, yes, and I have also got Willie Mullins as number one. Nick, please explain yourself. All right, well, Willie Mullins might have changed the game more than anyone else in the last decade, and he'll be the most successful Cheltenham Festival trainer of all time. Nicky Henderson might be the most... Um, accomplished curator of a good horse that there's ever been. Uh, to be to be honest, I think it's between the three of them. The reason that Paul Nichols is the top of my list is because he will be the um, winning most champion trainer of all time because he'll overtake Martin Pipe in two years' time or three years' time um, with with 15, 15 championships. He's got 14 at the moment. And he started without a cent in his pocket and with no background in the sport. And to do that in horse racing is borderline impossible. And when you listen to Ruby Walsh, who, let's face it, has been a huge, huge part of Willie Mullins' recent success, and the man sitting on my right, Sir Anthony McCoy, and probably Barry Garrity, who rode a lot of winners for Paul Nichols, when you talk, hear them talk about his ability to conjure more out of horses that you just thought were all right and see him winning King George's and Gold Cups with them, then that is why he's at the top of my list. Okay, you make a very good case. I was wondering where that was going to go. But I know, it was not- a bit of a round the houses job, but no, in the end. No, that was completely there. And if you were nodding your head along to that. No, I, I get Nick's theory, and you could say the same about Gordon Elliott at whatever age, mm-hmm. you know, because he's another lad that started with nothing in his pocket and has, at the age of 45 or whatever, he's 20-odd years behind Willie Mullins in terms of, like, you know, what we're talking about here and now. And, and look, I'm I'm boring. I just think about it in terms of where if I was writing for him at the moment, at this particular time, I'd probably rather write for Nicky because of Constitution Hill and John Bond than it would Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a close one. But like Willie Mullins to have 94 Cheltenham Festival winners. It's ridiculous, isn't it? It is insanity. Oh, off the chart. And yeah. right, we're just right now, he's just so dominant at the mm-hmm. moment. And this has been a slow enough season for him, relatively speaking, to get going into it. But you just know the juggernaut's just going to come along and absolutely lay down everyone then. Barry, you're in agreement there. I was wondering where you were going to go with this list. Well, for me, it's um, who trains at all different disciplines, at all different distances. That, to me, is who, how do you get the ultimate trainer? The one who can train anything. Royal Ascot winners. Royal Ascot, Willie, Nicky, very strong on that. Um, two mile hurdlers, champion hurdlers, champion chasers, gold cup, grand national. So Willie is the only one who has done all of those. Mm-hmm. Nicky was second in the grand national and he has won all of the rest. Paul has never won a champion hurdle or but Celestial Hall is probably the close. Has he had a he has, he, winner? He has won a champion hurdle, though it's debatable whether he'd like to be credited for it. Rock on, oh, rock rock on, on Ruby. Oh, well, yeah, you know, it, yeah. yeah. But he was second. He was only beaten that far with Celestial Halo as well. So I, can't, I think, you know, Henry de Bromhead, though. Henry de Bromhead, for what he achieved in one season mm. by winning yeah. a, Amazing. a Grand National Champion Gold Chase, Cup. A Gold Cup, yeah. a Champion Hurdle, oh, and the Grand National. Gold Cup first and second. Grand National first, first and second. second. Champion Hurdle and Champion Chase. 
you know, if someone else, if some of the other bigger, na- more established names had have done that, it'd be still talked about. It'd be up there um, with Michael Dickinson having the first five in the Gold Cup to have done that. Like, it was unbelievable. And it nearly, it went nearly unnoticed. Yeah. I mean, how, how big a string would he have? How big a yard would he have? It wouldn't have as big as those, I'm guessing 100 odd, 110 maybe. Wouldn't be as big as, as who he's competing against. Um, but, you know, you have to recognise to make the list reflects on the quality. Like, John Joe is brilliant too, yeah. and especially with a staying chaser. Mm. So you can pigeonhole and find things you like, but for me, if you can tick all the boxes, and at the minute Willie has ticked them all, Paul and Nicky are short head behind them. And Henry obviously did it all in one season early. Yes, yeah, certainly so. But I was surprised, though, AP, to see John Joe at the bottom of your list then. Uh, just look, I, I wrote a Grand National Gold Cup winner for him. Um, Barry wrote loads of winners for him. Brilliant trainer. I, I suppose when you look at the numbers and the quality that Willie has trained, Nicky has trained, Paul has trained. Um, but if I was to say to you, what do you th- what would you put down as John Joe's best quality as a trainer? The one thing that stands him apart. He, he as Barry said, he is brilliant with a stand chaser. You absolutely, you know, and. And as I said, I was lucky that he he put me on a Grand National winner. I could easily have ridden one of the others, so I could have. So um, and don't push it. He wasn't easy uh, either, was he? No, and 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 was synchronised as well. He got him to improve from from a handicapper, from winning a Midlands National, Welsh National. a Welsh National, a Lexus, and then and then to win a Gold Cup. And knew that he shouldn't run him in between um, the, the Lexus and, and Cheltenham. So you want a Gold Cup with a Grand National horse and a Grand National with a Gold Cup horse? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. bit of yeah. I actually got beaten. Don't push it. The novice chasing. Cheltenham at the December meeting told JP was the biggest certainty ever got beat couldn't believe it but Dem, Dem and beat him in neck so, <laughs> so, <laughs> you were forgiven in after, time well, well about four years later I was forgiven <laughs> I, when I when I'd accepted the fact that, oh well, maybe I was I just I remember telling him that he can't get beat he's absolute certainly he just didn't know how it's going to be him mm. think, and Dem had been second in a in a, in a Solomon and Torrell at the time or Neptune whenever at the time but anyway The drive of these guys is ridiculous isn't it? Oh, yeah yeah Just yeah, think about yeah, Nicky, yeah, Nicky yeah, Henderson yeah, I mean what is yeah. he he's in his what? Oh, seven, and, seven, and, seven, and John, yeah. John, he's and like these, he's insanely driven, and the, the sort of second half of his training career has gone nuclear. I mean, the first half was good, like champion trainer a few times, trained a lot of remittance man. We were talking about, but he's evolved as well that. from the eighties, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I like I would have moved with the times. He's like he's moved yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's and I would have picked it up from the lads when I was there, you know, talking to Corky and and what you were doing in the eighties. You know, they're doing far more trotting and cantering on the indoor school. Oh, moved at times, yeah. Moved at times, you know, went from the days off and slow work to faster work mm. and you know it's constantly evolving so and even Willie has as well like Willie's facilities have grown and that's not just through finance but you know he's he's he's, he's eking out that extra bit mm. and he's finding that in, like his gallop is unbelievable now unbelievable in two ways like it's massive but it's so testing so testing because oh, that's because he doesn't have a hill and the one so. thing that you say Barry an unbelievable trainer of you said actually an unbelievable trainer of a good horse Mm. Yeah. Oh, Nicky, yeah. Nicky oh. Henderson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. If you if you had that horse that you spent a fortune on, if or you, you had, considered if as a you great had performer. Sprinter Sack or Constitution Hill, or you can wish but then, them. But then you know it's hard to say that. Look at Willie Dunn with you know all the ones he's had, and Paul did the same with Cotto Star and them. But there's also people, horses. So. There's also horses that I think thrive with their trainers. Like Paul did brilliant with Cotto. Mm. He did brilliant with Denman. Nicky did brilliant with Constitution Hill Sprinter Sacra. You know, if you, if you put those in the other yards, I'm not fully convinced that they would do as well. I think the style of training suited some horses, and that's why some horses, you know, really progressed there. Um, so it's different horses suit different tra- trainers. I think they can maximize them, mm. different horses better. They have different strengths. That's it. And and I mean, you've all talked about the drive there. And I, I feel I've got this theory about Paul Nichols, where very often with some of his horses, they are almost overlooked then in these top races, because I feel that subconsciously, we've all got this association with Paul Nichols' horses that he gets more out of his horses than he necessarily should have done ability wise for that horse. So whenever we're talking about a gold cup type, and you know, we're doubting the likes of Brave Man's Games, Stamina over said trip, or anything like that, or any previous horses he's had going to Cheltenham, it's because subconsciously, we all think that actually, that horse probably isn't as good as that rating necessarily allows that, but Paul Nichols manages to bring up that bit extra in them. 
yeah, but there's probably evidence to back that. Like, and surname is an example, yeah. if you like. So, like, you know, Paul isn't afraid of talking his horse up and believing in him. Mm. And, and, and you know when you're riding from Barry, they're all going to win. They're and, all going to win. to be fair. Really? He would yeah, go put you... I, I like that, to be fair. But, anyway, but he would actually put all the going confidence to into you or he would just be that confident. Yeah, but when it doesn't happen, you're not oh, yeah, yeah, confident yeah. because it's your fault. <laughs> like Harry Cobden told to kick on and Captain Teague when Harry didn't want to. Yeah. You know, so Paul has this... You need to uh, go. Be positive. Yeah. Come on, chap. Be positive. Yeah. Po- yes. Yeah, like it's. How was he to deal with then post race if you got beat? It's your fault. So that was. Yeah, I like his thinking. Just blame everyone else, but <laughs> <laughs> I was all for that. It was bad, was it? No, no. But uh, he, uh, look, he, I actually enjoyed riding from, but I, he. You know, it was everyone's fault by his. You would enjoy riding. You would enjoy riding his horses. They were schooled. They were fit. Yeah, they yeah, were ready. Yeah, yeah. But if they weren't good enough, you Took might come to fact. accept it. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't yeah. So we've just talked about Paul Nichols, his drive, but also what he was like as a trainer to ride for. Now, Pete, in comparison to the other trainers that, of course, you rode for on this list, where do they sort of fall into I mean, in terms of even the horses and how they were to ride, you've just said, both of you, that Paul Nichols' horses were beautifully scored. So jumping-wise, you had a lot of confidence in them. How did they uh, compare and fair, contrast? They were all, they were all in terms of schooling and all that, and to ride for, they were all, didn't ride loads for William, not for Henry, but John Joe's were always really well schooled. Paul's were brilliant schooled. Nicky's novice hurlers are probably the best schooled of anywhere in the world. Any, there's not a there's an, you go out and ride Nicky Henderson's horse and a novice hurdle is like riding a handicapper. Really? Um, yeah. And, and and funny enough, it's like the one place you'd think when you go to school that mm. they'd, they'd be taking your time or mind or whatever that he'd never tell you to slow down. Never tell you to slow down. Which you'd, and as Barry said about involving with the times and all that, I'm sure there was a time whenever mm. that everything was a bit steadier away and all that, but you know, they would never tell you to slow down. So they all have their, you know, their, their, in terms of derived from all all oh, brain tried for and and as I said, Willie Mullins just just every kind of a horse. That's the thing. Flat jumps, you know. Been thinking, listening to you there, and what looking at Barry's board, I sort of I sort of understand what makes Nicky Henderson a good trainer, and I sort of understand what makes Paul Nichols a good you trainer. Don't understand what makes Willie? <laughs> 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 Kate, Kate knows what makes Willie Mullins maybe better than the rest of us. What makes Willie Mullins a good trainer? But I haven't. Got, I can I can see that he is brilliant at what he does, but it's the how that. It is. It's and I mean, Willie Mullins knows that. Yeah. No, because th- Willie Mullins is the only trainer I've of this list I've had the pleasure of working for, and of course I'm very, very honoured to work for him for Cheltenham Festival Week for the last three years now, and it is no fluke why he is better than everyone else. From seeing it firsthand now, the attention to detail is just on a whole another level. For me, and having ridden for them all, Willie and Nicky would put the most pace into us. Most pace into us. Make them fast, yeah. They would, they would get the speed. Mm. Um, like AP mentioned, we, we said that John Joe brilliant with a stay in Chester, and he is brilliant with a stay in Chester. But like Nicky, he, he, how he works on their system. Um, Can you just elaborate on that? What do you it, mean? It's, by? It's, it's, it's the way they work them. So with Nicky, horses are trained to be fresh. And fast. Like we remember school on one morning on horses in December, they probably had two runs and we jumped the third hurdle and they started booking. Like these are seasoned handicappers having a little pop to keep their eye in and they're booking, having had two runs. So how does he keep them fresh? Does he have certain days off for the horses? I'd say he gets them fit. He gets the graft in early, but then he backs off and the work becomes sharper and it's more speed related. Don't you think he trains more like a flat trainer? Possibly you could say that, but... He's trained Gold Cup winners as well. Mm. So he's, he, he, you know, there's no stamina issue either. So he crosses over really well. But Willie's gallop is, like, you, I ran a good bit while I was riding. And, you know, you'd run Ascot and you'd run Newbury and you'd run everywhere. I wouldn't want to run around with gallop. <laughs> That's the <laughs> one thing I'd say that, that if I was picking a lit, it's not a, it's not a flaw because the good horses still win. But I always think Nicky's horses are are better on fast ground or better mm-hmm. ground. They're quick horses, you know, I don't, they're not. Sluggers whereas I think anyway. Willie's, because of Barry says the gallop and all that. They're conditioned. They win on every, They're every conditioned yeah. for, for soft ground. Like, like I look at the Cheltenham Festival coming up and you look at the champion chase and if the ground was soft, it's going to be more of an advantage to El Fabiola than mm. it is to John Bon. And if it's better, it's going to be more, I think it'll be more of an advantage to John Bon, you know what I mean? So I, I I always had a preference. If I was riding for Nicky, I would have. I, I, 
I wouldn't have loved to go on a race meet and think, oh, it's really heavy ground. But if you, you, know talk, I mean? you talk about trainers evolving with the time, there was a time when you just wouldn't consider then, then, Nicky Henderson no. beyond two and a half well, miles well, because, he, he told and it was really in, in your era, he started getting all these nice three milers. That's because he told him to put in a sand gallop as I well. Spent, yeah. I spent about five years getting him to put in a sand so, gallop. The year, the year I left, you put it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The year you left, it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Barry Garrity <laughs> then as yeah. third in the list as yeah, Nick is now. That's better. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's Thanks got a better the sand The gold cup. There were Golden Miller, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So really, why was he sort of averse to putting in a sand gallop then for a no, while. It wasn't his idea, you know. So it's I'm I'm saying, you know, you should consider it. So he I I was seeing the benefit from yards I was riding out in, in Ireland. Um because it was the the the, the pre season conditioning you were doing. You know, that that core work, mm. the deep sand was brilliant for that. Willie's gallop is uh wood chip, but I promise you it's not a foot deep. I'd say it's 18 oh, inches. It's deep. scary. So, you know, it's scary. You know, yeah. yeah. I was but, terrified on it. Yeah. So it, it's, it, that works for him. So, but the sand gallop is definitely, I think Nikki has, I'm not taking credit. I don't mean to anyway, but it, it's, it, it's, it's improved things. I think they're better conditioned for soft ground than they were before. I know if, if, if Cheltenham could go soft on a day in December or November, We'd start having non runners. Okay, when you're, when you're, you've got to be a good rider at Willie Mullins, haven't you? Gosh. You can't just swing off one. No, no, you, not at all. I was watching work there a few months ago and it's the speed they go around the bends. Yeah. On, that, on, on, the, on those concentric circles. Mm -hmm. I was like, and I was doing an interview with him afterwards. I said, I, I, just the, the pace you'll, you'll, you'll go around a bend. And he said, well, I'd, he'd been to Canada when he was in his 20s and he worked around, I think, worked around a bull ring or a cinder track or something like that. And they were going flat out around these bends. He said, I came back and realized that horses could do it. Yeah. You ask horses mm. to do it, 90% 90, 90 of them could do it. And he said, nobody had ever really considered it before. And so the, the, the first all weather they put in was in his dad's paddies. Mm. It was only, I think it was a furlong and a half round. Yeah, ride wood chip as well. Yeah. They, shh, Oh, long and a half around. Yeah. And they would be going both ways though, wouldn't they? they no would wonder they can go yeah. so well around Cheltenham. When yeah, rail. <laughs> turning the whole the time. Rail. Yeah, exactly that. But that's the thing. Again, we're talking about modernization and revolutionizing the game. And if you don't keep up with the times, then you will be left behind. And Henry de Bromhead, I just want to go back to him now because I've never seen the setup, but I've always been told about his schooling. And for me, when I look at his horses, it looks as though they're trained to be fast. They're very much on the bridle types and they are quite keen goers. But I've always been told about the loose schooling. I don't know, AP, if you've been there and seen no, it, but I'd love to uh, see have, it in yeah. practice. Yeah, no, brilliant in the indoor. Uh, both with riders are loose and it is brilliant. Um, and it's it's one of his things. I think to do it on every Monday, it's, it's you know, he'd bring them in and they'd whiz around the horses. Every single it. horse? Um, I, as many I'd as say a lot of them, probably the horses that are running or, or, if, or if one needed any attention. Mm. Um, but it's, it's a big thing down there. Um, and you're right, he would, his horses would travel well. He probably wouldn't train his horses the way Nicky or Willie would for bumpers. So I'd say they, they develop their speed, not as early maybe as, as Nicky or Willie's, but schooling is brilliant down there. Yeah. It is, and he's got, he's got great facilities. The others have got a few years on Henry de Bromhead as well. It's worth yeah. worth noting. Uh, and a good this, few years. Very true. This was my thing as well, and he's not on the list, it's Gordon Elliott. It's mm. like, mm -hmm. He might end up. I here. don't even, I don't know, you know, Gordon Elliott, like, uh, you said about Paul, it was only whenever you said about Paul Nichols has come into the game with no, his dad, Brian was a policeman, I think, whatever, no real great knowledge of horse racing. Obviously he was a jockey and rode a good horse and that, but to start from scratch in Paul Barber's with few horses um, to, and from a very early stage, they likes to see more Indians, um, then see more business. They had a good horse for a long time, but built up an unbelievable thing. And and, and it was only when you said about Paul that I thought Gordon oh. Elliott's the exact same. Started off as an amateur in Martin Pipes, rode as a <laughs> bit and went back to Tony Martins in Ireland. And just what he's built up at a young age. And the, the Martin Pipe factor is huge here, isn't it? I mean, I don't need Well, a lot of them, you know, you, you could say, I suppose he changed how horses were trained and, and, and we're talking about pre present in the past, but you know, I, I suppose he, you know, he did change how horses were. And and Barry said that was the thing about Nicky. He went from the old style of training from Fred Winter, whoever it was before, to to moving along with each one of them. So um, to pick up the baton for each, like say, yeah, different yeah, yeah. And, era. Uh, and and not not saying, but you know, Willie obviously had his father. You know, Paddy having been such a brilliant trainer as well to train a. Obviously, to train a brilliant mare like Don Run and train the Noakes winner, I think when he was in his, you know, Paddy Mullins was like 
you know, really, you know, so I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying that's where Willie has had a, well, it is an advantage to have had, to have been looking on your dad to be such a good trainer, but that was my only one, the only, and he's the only one, I think. And, and there's been, there's lots of good trainers in, in England that, that, that could be on the list of Philip Hobbs's and Nigel Twiston Davis's that have done really well. And there's others in Ireland, you know, and then, you know, that Barry would have ridden for. But what so. makes them brilliant? Yeah. To me, and there's, there's, a, there's a good story about Paddy Mullins. Frankie won the Irish Ledger on the Philly. Her yes. name just lives in mind at the minute. Paddy brought her up to the car, yeah. to Galloper the week or so before the ledger and he travelled up in the box with her so Paddy was in his 80s at this stage and she came off the box and she sweated up and he said she's enough done bring her home like to have the, the presence just to know that read your horse understand your horse she sweated up on the box she's enough done bring her home didn't gallop her so for me what makes a great trainer you know anyone can gallop them you say right we're going to work them choose the Friday or choose the Friday choose the Friday three weeks in a row just say for example maybe less than that but mm -hmm. You stick to routine and that's what you do. And maybe it worked two months ago, so you're going to do it again because that's it. But someone like Paddy Mullins, knowing when not to work on, mm. that's the difference. Who was telling me the other day they were... Vintage was Tipple, sorry. That was it, yeah. Vintage and said he'd seen everything work and, it, uh, you know, you're happy, you're happy, you're happy, you're happy. Was it you that told me this? Who was what? Somebody well, told Willie. me. Who, uh, apologies to whoever it was who told me. Said they'd... they'd Watch work at Willie Mullins, and there's a hundred gazillion horses who come past. I mean, you happy? Yes, you happy? 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 No, you happy? Yes, happy. Somebody says, "Yeah, delighted," and he went, "I'm not taking back." Yeah, to have yeah, that adaptability. That like when I'm yeah. and, and, and and they have it. Like a Nicky has it. Like Nicky in February when he's getting them ready for Cheltenham, and he's judging will he work him over seven, eight, nine? You're going to drop him in last of five. Is he going to have him second of three? joining up with the lead horse at the six, joining up with the seven, like the attention to detail, but it's all known. He's a reason for doing it, you know, and like that, you know, deciding, no, I won't. As I say, anyone can gallop him, can say, yeah, no, has to work today, runs next week. But the trainer who can say, no, this one's sweated. And that, that story of Paddy Mullins, that to me is, that just typifies what makes, that, that's the genius that you can't. Yeah. You could write a book on training horses, but to put it into practice, you need to be the genius who can look at the horse and understand why you do it. The horsemanship behind it Absolutely. then as well. Yeah. Sorry, Nick. But um, yeah, so I think we have completely compiled our list then with Willie Mullins very much, well, between three of us at the top. Paul Nichols, though, for Nick. Can we recognise the fact that I actually get in on I Nick know, yes. I know, exactly. Yeah. But Nick has go. completely Sorry. changed Gallops, his stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would, Sand I would, Gallops Limited. And obviously McCoy's in <laughs> all of these I would somewhere. Definitely, I would and Walsh definitely is squeeze. definitely in a few of these. I was going to say, yeah, there's going to be a few Walsh in there as well. I would Gordon Elliott in there. And yeah, where would you have him, though? Where would you put him on that list of... I'd, I'd probably in there somewhere. So around four, around yeah, four. So yeah. he's got to work at the way moment. Up. At the with moment as well. Form P and, oh, no. yeah. yeah, time form P. Yeah. There you go. At exactly. The, more the to come from him. Right. But again, like I say, we have just limited this list to only five current modern day trainers, but we could mention however many trainers that are out there at present. But Willie Mullins' general consensus for now is heading our modern day trainer list. Have we got it right though? Let us know in the comments section below. Big thank you to the lads for all of their efforts. Yet again, a big thank you to you at home for watching. This has been Inside Track, the debate brought to you by William Hill. Well, a big thank you for watching Inside Track, the debate brought to you by William Hill. If you want to go back and watch our previous episode where we rank our top five favourite festivals, excluding Cheltenham, then click the link in the video. Big thank you again for watching 18 Plus. Please remember to gamble responsibly.